Now, I'm sure today's video is going to rile some people up, but are you living in a productivity fantasy? Picture this. You fire up Cursor, you start chatting with Claude, and you feel like you're coding at superhuman speed. The AI is cranking out functions, fixing bugs, writing tests. You're thinking, this is it. I'm unstoppable. But what if I told you that that feeling is actually a complete illusion? What if the very tools that make you feel like you're a coding wizard are actually making you slower? What if every developer who swears by AI assistance is trapped in the same productivity mirage? So there's a groundbreaking study that just dropped that challenges everything we thought we knew about AI coding tools. And I'm sure I can already hear the AI lovers out there yelling at me that I'm wrong. And as always, make sure you leave a comment down below if you disagree, because I'd love to have a great discussion. But we're going to dive into this today. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so the first thing I'm going to say here, folks, is don't shoot the messenger, right? The AI productivity myth just got exposed by real data. Researchers tracked experienced developers working on massive code bases, the kind of complex million-line repositories that mirror real-world development. And the result? Developers using AI tools took 19% longer to complete tasks, even though they believe they were 20% faster. So I'm going to break down the report for you, what it means for your career and the future of software development. Now, one of the first things that I'm going to definitely point out is an interesting point is that when Google CEO talked about the productivity gains, he said that developers were getting about 10x productivity gains. Yet we've heard things said as much as 30% of the code is being written by AI. So what's the difference between those two? And I think that's what this study is going to show us today. So let me switch over to my other monitor here. Now, uh, this is a report from Meter, right? And it says, we random, randomized controlled trial to see how much AI coding tools sped up experienced open source developers. The result surprised us. Developers thought they were 20% faster with AI tools, but they were actually 19% slower when they had access to AI than when they didn't. And they go through and they break this down. They said, we recruited 16 experienced open source developers to work on 246 real tasks in their own repositories. We randomly assigned each task to either allow AI or to disallow AI. At the beginning of the study, developers forecasted they would get sped up by 24%. After actually doing the work, they estimated that they had been sped up by 20%, but it turns out they were actually 19% slower. We were, we were surprised by this, given one, impressive AI benchmark scores. So it actually said the AI was doing well in this study, right? But uh, they said, but two, widespread adoption of AI tools and and see our own research uh, measuring trends, right? When AI is allowed, developers spend less time actually coding and searching for information and instead spend time prompting AI, waiting on reviewing AI outputs and idle. We find no serial reason for the slowdown is driven by a combination of factors. So they go through and break down the fact that now they're reviewing the output. They're, so it, whereas instead, if you just jump in and write the code yourself, they find that it's actually faster. So they break all of this down and, and they go through all of it. And they're not saying that you shouldn't be using AI, right? Because as we all know, part of this is that it's going to take humans to review this, right? So it's an interesting point. And so they, uh, they said, we're exploring running experiments with this on other settings, but they give the paper and they give the whole research, right? Now there's some other breakdowns to this, but this is really, you know, both the, um, the part that they're really feeling. And they, they quote Simon Willison here, who's one of the best people to report on this, right? And he says, the response of the paper to us has really demonstrated that people are very disparate and hungry for good information about the impact of AI in the wild. He says, it feels very credible, Simon Willison says, the CC creator of Dango web framework and a regular user of AI tools. While I acknowledge that the study's sample size, right, it is kind of a small sample size, but... Um, but he said that he found that it probably that the paper itself was very accurate. Now, I thought this was really interesting too, because ultimately what they're really running down to is this, and this wasn't done like multiple years ago. Cause I hear a lot of people being like, Oh, but it's already improved since then. All right. All right. All right. They didn't just ask people if they felt more productive. They didn't use some toy project that a high school intern could solve. They went into the real world, right? These were real world projects. So I don't know if you noticed that the projects that they were using here to run this test, right? They, cause they talked about them here. They said that the average was 22,000 stars with a million lines of code. So these were good sized projects and these were ones that were liked. So these weren't bad projects, right? 
Now they took, and it goes, this article goes through to talk about it, but 19% slower, right? Now, you know, Jensen Huang, you know, is talking about here and he's said for a while now that he says, look, Remember, AI is not going to replace your AI jobs, right? But it's someone who knows how to use it and might. What I mean by that and is, then, you know, as we go on, you know, I'll look at some of these AI other articles that we have about this, but the study was really AI interesting because this wasn't a disparate study. This it's was a very, you know, peer reviewed, like this was a real study, a but the study found that experienced developers with deep knowledge of their code base actually performed better so, just sitting down don't, or writing the code. Don't, don't so what does that tell us, right? Milan Milovic, Milanovic, a CTO with over 20 years of experience, notes that seasoned developers and knew their code bases inside and out, working on million line so repositories it's a, it's with an, years of accumulated a, complexity, boost, right? Actually. When you understand the architecture, um, de architectural decision, the historical on, context, know, and the intricate like dependencies, AI suggestions decades, often feel shallow and misguided. Uh, so kind of let me break that down a little bit. What Milosevic is talking about here is he's saying that because they went to seasoned developers who knew their code bases, right? So a junior AI, developer who lacks this deep con context might actually benefit AI more from AI. However, because they're junior, a lot of times they will the miss a lot of the things that a senior won't with bad outputs, a, a with how to frame it, with how to build scaffolding and everything you need to to get AI. So it's tough counterbalance, to right? And it seems counterintuitive. The more experience you have, the less helpful current AI tools become. However, they've also found that those with more uh, a, more, ex, more experience have a better chance of setting up the AI tools. So the study reveals that developers spend much more time prompting AI and waiting for a response than actually just sitting down writing the code. And I believe this because a lot of like auto prompt or auto connect, auto correct and auto prompt tools coming out of Visual Studio are getting or and out of other tools. VS Code seems to be like what most people are using nowadays. That is, um, uh, I use Visual Studio Code or VS, uh, the full Visual Studios because we largely build with .NET. So we're usually, usually using Visual Studio. Uh, my front end developers use VS Code, but in general, uh, most of my teams are using Visual Studio, the full suite. But what they're finding here though, and the screen recording showed that developers get stuck in the prompt refine review cycle that ate up massive chunks of their productivity time. So. If the prompt gets it right the first time, that's fine, but they have to review it so closely because the times that they don't get it, and then you try to put it back in and generally it starts to get it wrong. And every developer who uses cursor or Claude code or what knows exactly what I'm talking about. So AI tools struggle significantly with large complex code bases where context and nuance matters. If you don't believe me, try to get AI to debug your code for you. It does not do a good job. One developer in the study noted that he wasted at least an hour first trying to solve a specific issue with AI before reverting changes and implementing the solution manually. This is where you see this eat up over time. And see what I think a lot of people are feeling is they see the AI tool drop in and those times it gets it right, they're like, wow, look, it just saved me all this time. But they're not taking into account the times it doesn't get it right. Now, again, I'm not saying you shouldn't be using it. Arrow is going to be blasting me here. The comments are going to be full of like Spencer's just coping because his job's going to get stolen by AI. Like, good. Like, please leave comments because I love it and it helps algorithm. But, um, but overall, like my point here is, is these AI systems are, are still have a long ways to go. And we need to understand that as we set them up and as we expect them. The other part to this is I find that executives are making decisions and I, I've, I've been reached out to now by two different people looking for clients and they're like, well, but I don't think those billable hours are reasonable because, and I was just projecting the, the project and they're like, I don't think it's reasonable because AI writes all the code for you now. And, and again, it's just building this uh, unrealistic expectation out there that coding and software development doesn't require time. And that's why I think studies like these become very valuable and important. Because is AI code we a tool we should be using? Absolutely. Is it going to improve over the next 10 and 20 years? 100%. Is it where it needs to be replaced developers yet? Absolutely not, right? So one partic uh, participant described evaluating AI code as being, quote, like the early days of Stack Overflow when you always thought people were really experienced and then you just copy and paste their stuff and things explode, end quote. So the confidence that AI tools project often masks fundamental misunderstandings of the problem domain or business requirement. So those who understand the actual business, these developers who knew their code base, knew the background, could jump to the logic much faster than even the AI system, which could 
take context of the entire code base because they knew the business context behind it. So experienced developers have learned to be ske uh, skeptical of magic solutions, and they often trigger some of those warning bells. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected and you need help getting those systems connected, make sure you reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, we do a lot of work with companies to help them work to maximum efficiency by getting their systems connected. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. Now, even after experiencing the actual 19% slowdown, study participants still believe AI has improved their productivity by 20%. So that's an interesting thing because this becomes a massive disconnect suggesting that the feeling of productivity from AI interaction is psychologically powerful, but it's also factually wrong. And that's what's kind of interesting about this. This perception gap has huge implications for team, uh, team sizing, teams, teams trying to choose tool adoption, etc. right? I've heard a lot of people are saying, well, we're going to implement Claude and therefore, or Claude code, and therefore I will need less developers. That's this study totally proves that wrong, right? The pragmatic engineer research found that AI tools work much better for individual developers than it does at an organizational le level. Routine tasks like documentation, documentation, boilerplate generation, and test writing see genuine productivity gains from AI assistance. So at companies like Anthropic, developers report that 90% of the code for Claude Code is written by Claude Code. But these teams are kind of building AI tools who understand the technology deeply, right? So AI excels at well-defined, isolated problems where context is limited and the solution space is constrained. So Amazon developers found AI tools particularly effective for writing performance review feedback, generating self-reviews, and any writing tasks, which feels like a chore. I think you could just kind of sum that up by saying it does a really good at any writing tasks. AI is fantastic at text generation of things. The key is matching the tool to the task where it has clear advantages rather than forcing it into a complex problems or thinking it can do more than it can. So to kind of sum things up here, right? Despite current limitations, develop, developers absolutely need to learn to use AI tools because the technology is rapidly evolving. And so this is not me saying you shouldn't be using them, but the goal is to depend on, is to not depend on AI for everything. If you depend on AI for everything, it's actually going to slow you down and make you worse developer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So while 75% of developers reporting feeling more productive with AI tools, the data shows that that actually decreases. So AI tools aren't going away and the technology will continue to improve uh, rapidly over the next coming years. So we need to be realistic, but we need to have realistic expectations about these. Researchers emphasize that they, quote, would discourage anyone from interpreting these results as AI slows down developers because context matters enormously. That's from the study. So, and I agree with that. I think AI does increase uh, productivity overall. However, you've got to have smart adoption, which means identifying specific use cases where AI provides clear value rather than wholesale replacement of development workflows. Workflows. Martin Fowler, who's like one of the longstanding minds of development, compares LLMs, quote, to the change from assembler to the first high-level programming language. End quote. And he says it's a fundamental shift, but one that requires new skills and approaches. Teams should pilot AI tools carefully, measure actual outcomes, and adopt gradually rather than rushing into organizational wide adoption. The future belongs to developers who can effectively combine human expertise with AI capabilities, not those who try to replace one with the other. So I like to use and Andre Karpisky's example here, right? We want to build Iron Man, not robots, right? The robots didn't work by themselves. Iron Man became a human augmented system, right? Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, we can help you to connect these systems so that your company works faster and more efficient. Check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. And here's some great information about some of our services. And as always, make sure you leave a comment down below, if nothing else, just to say hello. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. 
My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI-powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect. Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.